Welcome to our Amazon Market Insights webinar in the month of September. If you have joined these webinars in earlier times, uh, you might find some changes today because up till last month, we were only looking into Germany as a marketplace, as an Amazon marketplace. After we got several requests, if we could not expand these webinars to other countries too, we now decided to give you more insights into the market into like the eu5 amazon marketplaces namely uk germany france italy and spain but before i will go uh, walk you through like some interesting insights on the category trading machines please let me introduce myself my name is Ines Nagy. I'm responsible for the consulting business of Metoda. I'm with Metoda since more than seven years now. Before that, I've been with Amazon, um, introducing the subscribe and save program in Germany as a program manager and then working as a senior vendor manager there. So I'm also trying to get you some insights from my Amazon time. And here at Metoda, what I'm doing is really that I'm helping our customers to get insights out of this data you can gain in e-commerce it's not only amazon but it's also beyond amazon but in the webinars we are focusing on amazon and like support our customers in, in yeah taking the right decisions based on data as i said if you have joined these webinars before you will already now see a change in the agenda we are going to look into drilling machines this month on the Amazon marketplaces, UK, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. So we are having a stronger focus on the market. And then we will give you some insights into like share of voice, meaning like which brands are organically and paid most visible on one of the marketplaces. And actually this time the marketplace we picked is Germany. But let's directly start into the market. What are we going to look into today? Before I will deep dive into the drilling machines category, um, I'm actually bringing with me a, develop, a look into the development of the Amazon retail business worldwide. Because as you know, times have changed. Um, so there is like, yeah, we see figures that we do not know from Amazon. Um, like not only growth, but also really declining sales. Um, so we were going to look into this first to put all the following pic figures into the right into the right picture. Um, then we are going to look into the development of the main category, which is do it yourself, or in other countries it's named home improvement or tools. Um, and then we are going to dig into drilling machines, how big are the marketplaces, what revenue do we see, how do prices look like. And speaking about price, we are also looking into like how is the market segmented into different price ranges. And last but not least, we are looking into the top brands in these five marketplaces in the category drilling machines. But let's start with the Amazon development um, from a retail perspective. The figures you are seeing here on the left hand side, it's the net sales on the right hand side. It's the year over year growth are from the Amazon quarterly results we are collecting. Um, I mean, they are published and um, that these figures help us to simply uh, put the development of our customers and of course of different categories into the right uh, picture. So what we see here on the left hand side, we picked 219 up to this year. Why starting with 219? I think that's pretty simple to understand because 219 was the last year without any cor corona or COVID-19 impact. And what we've seen over the last years is strongly impacted by COVID-19. So what we see 2019, the year of a year growth net sales worldwide um, was 16%. It's fine. It's it's a good growth year over year. And but if we look at 2020, you see that the Amazon retail sales significantly grew by 40% year over year. And of course, you see that growth started in Q2 
which was the time when COVID-19 was all over the world. So consumers started to shift their buying behavior. They were yeah, increasing their online shopping and decreasing offline shopping simply because sometimes it was even not possible to go offline shopping because the shops were closed. So Amazon and all other online retailers significantly show higher sales and also like extremely strong year over year growth in 2020. But what you might have recognized already in 2021 is of course that the year over year growth did not continue like that. While we still see in Q1 2021, a very strong growth of more than 40%. Um, it dropped down to like roughly 2% in Q3 and Q4 last year. And this is also something that you see here in the net sales on the left-hand side. So Q4 was yeah, roughly as large from net sales perspective as Q4 in 2020. That's why we are here very close to, it was actually 1% year over year growth in Q4 2021. But of course, if you compare the sales figures from 2021 with 2022, uh, 2020, um, the year over year growth is not as strong as in the previous year. But if you look now on 2022, it even looks worse. Um, what we see is that net sales is negative year over year. Um, we now see like Q1 and Q2 um, from like first half year this year from Amazon perspective. Um, they show a negative growth of minus 1%. That's not much, but if you compare to a usual growth, which is usually at least above 10%. This is really a picture that we haven't seen before uh, from the Amazon side. The impact here um, we see is really like from, from different sources. Of course, like consumers started to shift back to offline shopping, um, but that is a thing that already started in 2021, like mid of 2021. But the other impact we see here is really our current worldwide situation, we have, econ we have an economic crisis that is like further pushed by the Ukraine-Russian war, which is leading to increasing costs, like increasing inflation. So consumers do not have so much money anymore that they can spend. And of course, they are also like um, trying to keep the money they have because they are unsure about the near future. So a development that's not nice, but it's uh, something that we see on Amazon and other online retailers too. And it helps you to put the, um, the figures we see on the next slide a little bit more into the right perspective. So keep in mind here to date or like first half year 2022, Amazon retail sales was minus 1% year over year. If we look at the main category um, for drilling machines, which is like do-it-yourself, home, home improvement or tools, it's just named differently in different countries. Um, you see here the, the shaded uh, bar is split into two time periods. It's the first half year and the second half year. And the solid bar is showing the orders for the first half year this year. Um, we are looking at the top, top 10,000 ISINs per day in the category. So we are really looking at a, a large volume here. And what you see is that all the countries show a very strong year over year decline. Um, it's much stronger than what we see in Amazon retail worldwide. Why is this the case? It's because we are seeing in different categories that like especially hardware and appliance categories, um, they show a much stronger year over year decline than for instance, consumables categories. So if you take them all together, the decline is not as strong um, as if you would look at such a, yeah, 
typical also like appliance or hardware category like do it yourself what you can also see very easily is that germany is the country with the highest volumes um, followed by the uk and then we see that france italy and spain is much smaller than germany and or uk and what you can also see, maybe not that clearly from, from the chart, but what I can tell you is that actually, like in all the countries in 2021, the first half year had a higher sales volume than the second half year. Because yeah, everybody knows do it yourself is something that has like the high seasons, especially like in, in spring and summertime. Um, when you do something outside or on your house, um, in your garden. So the first half year is always stronger than the second half year. If we would like use that as a forecast, that would actually also mean that the next half year or the second half year we are already currently in will not be as strong as the first half year, which means we are definitely going to be below 2021 sales volumes in that category across these countries. But we were not only looking at the main category, of course, we were we are especially looking at the drilling machines or drills. Um, we show you here the different categories we were looking up um, in the different countries, and we map them all to a common category or subcategory. So these are the categories from the bestseller tree from Amazon. And you see like drills is something like the parent category, and um, the other ones are like subcategories. The structure across all countries is very, very similar. The only thing that we see is that actually Spain has an additional category that's not existing in the other countries. Um, it's like pistol grip drills. Um, these kind of products is not, not, these are no products that are like specific to Spain. It's more that like Spain has an additional category and um, these kind of products are usually in other categories in the other countries. So when we look at like all these different bestseller categories um, in the different countries in the first half year of this year, we see that as we have seen it already in the main category, do it yourself, Germany is the country with the highest volumes and the highest revenue and also like the highest average price we see here. In total, across all five countries, we've seen 1.2 million orders in the first half year this year, and they were generating roughly 170 million revenue, which is gross revenue. That's that's important to know. Um, so Germany has the highest volumes, the highest average prices, the highest revenue, followed by UK. But UK actually is the country with the lowest average price which actually leads to the situation that although UK is just about 30% below Germany in volumes, it's like more than 50% below revenue um, compared to Germany. We don't see that only in drilling machines. Um, always when we look into different countries, different Amazon marketplaces, we see that UK is a very much price-driven market. And that is also something you can see here. Um, this usually also ends up in like quite a lot of China based brands selling more or less successful on the UK market that you might not know, for instance, in Germany or France. But um, what you can also see is that um, the price in France is the average price is nearly as high as in Germany. And then it's going down um, Italy and Spain. Italy is actually the smallest market we see here. It's the smallest market um, in terms of volume. It's the smallest market in terms of different products we found in the analysis. It's the smallest market in terms of revenue. But talking about revenue and price on this level is I think quite interesting. And what you can take away is really like Germany is the market with 
the highest volumes, and UK is very much price driven. If we look into a little bit more detail, I've showed you all these different categories we were looking at. Um, so what we did is also that we split up the revenue I've just showed you on the slides on the different categories, on the parent category drills and on the subcategories. Usually drills as parent categories in the Amazon bestseller tree does not hold so many ASINs because the ASINs you see in the drills bestseller category are usually the top selling ASINs from the subcategories. Um, so that's why we see here quite a low revenue share because we excluded um, the ISINs that are also listed in other categories in the subcategories to avoid like a double counting. Um, but it's different in Spain. So Spain actually shows a picture where we can see many, many ISINs just being listed in the drills bestseller category but not in below ones. And that's why we see a very high um, revenue share here in the drills category in Spain. In all other categories or in all other countries, it's actually, except UK, that the drill drivers have the highest share. Um, so you see in Germany and France, it's in Italy, it's 50%. In Spain, it's 39%. In the UK, the largest category in revenue is the combi drills, but the second one is the drill drivers. Um, so these are the main products sold on Amazon, um, which yeah generate high volumes and also high revenue, although they are not the products with the highest average price. As you can easily see in this light green shaded fields, Hammer drills are the category with the highest average price in Germany, UK, and France. Um, and in Italy and Spain, it's like um, the impact drivers or the combi drills. Um, so you see, although we have the highest revenue in drill drivers, it's not driven because they have the highest average price. It's more driven because they have the highest volume. Speaking about price, let's have a look into how the revenue is split across different price segments in the different countries. So what you see here is a typical chart for these kind of analysis. Like what, what I said, what we are doing here is really like splitting up the revenue into different price segments to understand how does the pricing um, like is in the different markets. So especially when you compare that between the different countries. What's easy to see is that for all countries, like the main volumes, um, the main revenue is generated in the price range 50 to 150 euro. But if we look at where do we reach like 80% of the revenue, it's slightly different. So for instance, UK and Spain, we've seen that were the two countries with the lowest average price. They generate more than 80% of the revenue with products up to 200 euro. And you see UK has the highest revenue share in the price range 50 to 100 euro. And Spain is the same. If we look at Italy, they generate nearly 90% of the revenue with products up to 250 euro. And Germany and France, not surprisingly, the categories with the highest average um, price, they generate 80% plus revenue with products up to 300 euro. And you can also see like the higher the prices get, the lower the revenue share is. Also, although like we see here, for instance, in France, um, they still generate quite some share with products being actually at the price above 500 euro. But overall, this is a picture where you can really nicely see how the price levels are in the different countries. And it shows, it simply yeah, shows what we have seen in the average price before that Germany and France are the ones with the highest prices. Um, and you can also see that 
the price range with the highest revenue is really in the price range 50 to 150 euro. But interesting, of course, too, is who is actually owning the highest market shares? And that's what we are going to look at in the next slide. Um, I hope you can see or read that properly. I just recognize it's a little bit small. Um, again, what you see, what we show you here is for the different countries, which are the top three brands in terms of revenue with their market share and in brackets, the average price of that brand. Um, what you can see here is that Bosch is actually the market leader in all five marketplaces. Um, I have to admit that for Bosch, what we did is that we actually um, put together Bosch Home and Garden and Bosch Profe Professional under the brand Bosch. The reason for that is that the listings are not really um, clean in all countries. So what we've seen is that um, some countries properly use for all the products like Bosch Home and Garden and Bosch Professional as a brand. Um, in other countries, we find listings that are just listed under the brand Bosch, independently if it's Bosch Home and Garden or Bosch Home Professional. Uh, Bosch Professional. Um, of course, that might be also due because not all of the products are usually listed by the vendor by themselves, but also by resellers. Um, so we decided to put that all together because like cleaning that up would have been quite some some work um we usually do something like that like these data cleanups for customer projects but for the webinar bosch s1 brand covering home and garden and professional um should be fine what you can also see is that in the top three brands is they are nearly in all countries um these are very well-known power tool brands. They are not only producing drilling machines, but they are also producing a wide variety of other um, power tools. The only exception we see here is in Spain. Um, the brand with the second highest market share is Faxamol. It's actually a China-based manufacturer, um, which is like second in market share in Spain. Um, with yeah, 77 euro uh, average price, a quite low average price. If you, for instance, compare to the other average prices of Bosch or Devault or Makita, um, but actually this brand is also in the top 10 brands in UK, France, and Italy. So um, they are selling quite successfully. As I said, in some countries we see quite successful China-based brands um, selling and gaining market share also in this category. Um, but what you can also see is the other always reflects like the rest of the market besides these top three brands. Um, it usually is at least at 30%, except for Germany, we see that actually Bosch, Makita and Einhell, um, yeah, take up nearly a whole market. So for other brands, we only see like 13% market left, um, which is a very different situation compared to other countries. Um, we see similar things sometimes in other categories like German consumers are, yeah, are usually not that price driven, at least the ones that buy on Amazon. Um, and they usually also trust brands a lot they know or especially like brands they know a lot and of course Bosch is a German brand so um, this reflects pretty much how Germans shop on Amazon um, they search strongly for brands and they shop for brands at least if they buy something um, that is supposed to yeah or that has a higher price So are there questions? I think my colleague already posted in the chat that if you have questions, just post them in the chat. Um, if not, I would just wrap up the market 
portion and then continue with the share of voice. So no questions? Okay. Um, then I just wrap up the market section. So what we have seen across these five marketplaces we are looking at, drilling machines were generating 1.2 million orders in the first half year 2022. And this um, makes up about 170 million euro gross revenue. Um, Germany is the largest market in regards to assortment sold, in regards to volumes, in regards to average price and in regards to revenue, um, followed by UK, France, Spain and Italy. Italy is the smallest market in that category for Amazon. Um, the main revenue is generated by drill drivers except for the UK where drill drivers are only like second largest category where combi drills are the largest one. Um, the main revenue in all countries is generated in the price range 50 to 150 euro. Um, and Germany followed by France have the highest price while UK has the lowest price. And what we also seen is that usually like the strongest brands in these markets, in this category, are really well-known power tool brands um, and they are dominating the market strongly. So then let's continue with share of voice analysis. What are we going to look into here? Uh, we did a rough analysis on branded versus generic search um, then we will look at the top search terms in this category for Germany now as, as a selection because we will not be able to do that for all five countries in the given time. Um, and then we are looking into the top brands listed brands in organic and paid visibility. So branded versus generic search, um, this looks very different to what we usually see. Um, the generic search traffic is the blue one, the branded search traffic is the green one. And what we see here is actually that 80% of the traffic is branded. That's very uncommon. Usually it's more than like 20, 25, 35% max. Um, so what we see here surprised us a little bit at the beginning. Um, but of course, there are reasons behind that. So one reason, for instance, is that like most of the power tools today are battery powered and you might be able to use the same battery for like different power tools of the same brand, but you're usually not able to use the, the battery of one brand for another brand. Um, so if you as a power tool manufacturer manage to lock in your cons customers on your brand, they will usually buy further products of your brand instead of like switching the battery system. What we also see here is that in Germany, Makita is the brand with the highest search traffic, followed by Bosch and Milwaukee. And if we look at the detailed search terms, you can actually see that quite a few of the search terms, the ones with the highest traffic, like for instance, just Makita or Bosch Professional, are not specific to drilling machines. So this very high brand traffic share is also due to the fact that consumers just search for the brand. Um, they also buy drilling machines, but they, of course, also buy other power tools from Makita, um, which actually makes it a little bit hard to surely like 100% assign the traffic that is for like uh, drilling machines. But this is also the reason why we have such a very high, or, or it's part of the reason why we have very high branded traffic share in the drilling machine category. What we do usually when we look at the share of voice or the visibility of the brands is not that we are excluding branded 
search terms because that would be unfair if we search for Makita and expect Bosch to show up. Um, so the share of voice analysis is actually based on these generic search terms. It's the top 10 generic search terms we are looking at um, from the first half year. And you see like, for instance, like drill drivers um, is already like a, a cordless, um, or how do you call that? Like the, the cordless um, driver is like the one at the top of the search. And if we look at the visibility of the top brands, you see that in Germany for the organic visibility, so the organic ranking on the search result page, if you search for these generic search terms, um, is actually the highest visibility is covered by the top three brands also having the highest revenue based market share. Um, which is, this is not surprising because um, the organic visibility is driven by current and historic sales. So if you have high sales, uh, you will have a high market share and you will show up high in the organic visibility. All the others are pretty unknown brands um, that are not like international power tool manufacturers, but most probably a lot of them are China based brands or even China-based resellers. Because if you look at the products, pretty much the, the pictures are all the same. There's just a different brand on them. Um, for the paid visibility, the picture looks quite different. Uh, we see Bosch with a very, very high share in paid visibility. Um, we see also that, of course, Bosch is searched strongly in Germany. But what they are also doing is that they are covering um, the generic traffic with advertising to even increase their share. Because as I just said, if you have like these cordless tools, um, battery powered tools, then it's important to lock in your consumers, your customers to your brand. So that is something they are doing very access successfully. So they most probably invest a lot into advertising, but of course they have such a high relevance also um, that they, yeah, that they get like placements on top for like less than an unknown brand in the advertising. And what we also see here is that besides Bosch and Einhell, all, all the other brands are pretty unknown, but we also find Faxamol here. Um, that's the China-based brand that was second in market share in Spain um, and is showing up in the top 10 in all other countries except Germany. They also try to increase their market share in Germany via advertising. But Bosch is not giving up so much space for other brands here. So to wrap this up, um, what we really see here in this category um, is that we have a very, very high branded share. Um, but of course, as I said, it's also driven because consumers just search for the brand and might also buy other, in addition, other products from these brands, not only drilling machines. The strongest brand in search in Germany is Makita, followed by Bosch. Um, and we see that the organic visibility is dominated by those brands with very high market share. So it's Bosch, Makita and Einhell. But we also see that although Bosch is very strong in the market, has a very high share, they still strongly overinvest in advertising on generic search terms to ensure their market share. Are there any questions on the share of voice analysis? Any other questions? No. Okay, then I will just sum up the presentation, the webinar from today. So what we have seen for the five European marketplaces we were looking at is that the category structure is very similar in all countries. 
Um, we've seen that in the first half year, um, we drilling machines generated 1.2 million orders and roughly uh, 170 million euro gross revenue, with Germany being by far the largest market. Um, the main revenue is generated in the price range 50 to 150 euro, and the market is really dominated by well-known international power tool brands. Um, there are not so many unknown brands really gaining a larger portion of the market, except Faxamol. This is really a brand, if you're in that category, um, you should have an eye on them, how they are developing in your country. Um, and if we look at the share of voice for Germany, we have seen that the largest portion of the traffic is branded, um, with Makita being the most searched brand here. The organic visibility is dominated by the, the brands with the highest market share, and Bosch is really um, strong in advertising. Um, while Oh, there is a question coming in. I just wrap up the summary and then I answer this question. Um, what we also see is that um, consumers can be locked in um, if they are using your cordless devices. They will most probably also buy other power tools from your brand to be able to reuse the battery. Um, and this is something that is reflected in sales and in search. And what we also see is really that it's very hard to get the food into that market as a new brand or as a reseller brand, um, because consumers are searching very strongly for specific brands. Um, the search share generic search share is very low. Um, so if you want to join or enter that market, it's going to be very cost intense to um, yeah, push your market share, your visibility by advertising. So there is one question. So the question is, why does Bosch get top ad placements cheaper than less successful brands? What's the mechanism behind this? Um, the reason is simply that the Amazon advertising algorithm is not only um, selecting the advertisement that's displayed to the consumer based on the highest bid, but it also includes the relevance of the product um, on these search terms. So it's like, um, positively speaking, um, if a consumer is searching for a drilling machine and your product already generates a lot of sales organically or paid on this search term, then the Amazon algorithm knows that it's quite likely that a new consumer searching for the search term will also click on your product and buy it. And although Amazon is really like increasing the number of advertising on the search results extremely over the time, it still tries to show the consumer products that are relevant. So the algorithm is not only like taking into account the bid, but also the relevance of the product and the likelihood that this product is bought by the consumer. And that's this combination will result in being, yeah, getting advertising placements um, for a lower price if you sell very successfully, while the other way around, if you are new to a market or new to a category, the algorithm doesn't know your brand, it doesn't know that you might be selling very well. So you will have to pay more to get your advertising on top or in front of the consumer at all. That's the the how the Amazon algorithm works. So uh, if there are other questions, no. Oh, thank you. Um, so then 
I think we can finalize the webinar for today. Um, if you are interested in like maybe other categories, <clears throat> you will find all the um, upcoming events on our website. Or if you don't want to miss an upcoming event, you can just sign up for our newsletter and we will regularly inform you about new, our new webinars. If you might be interested in a in webinar that was running in earlier times, you will also find for all webinars, the presentation and the recording on our website. Um, so just feel free to look there and uh, get further information. You will also find, of course, our solution portfolio on the uh, website. And if you are interested in such an analysis or further topics, um, just please get in touch with us. We are always happy to support our customers. Then thank you very much for your time today. Um, have a nice lunch break. <laughs>